Welcome back to another issue of Hops Geek News. Today, we are going to be talking about the epic battle to save Martha. We're talking Batman Martha. v Superman. Of course, we are talking the 2016 most divisive, most splitting movie of the century in which it has left people so angry and so torn up. It is Batman v Superman. We're saving Martha. We're saving Lois. We're saving Superman. We're doing it all. But first, without further ado, this is a podcast where we talk about news. So I am Mash. With me is the Hoppy Mommy. What's up? Not much. How are you on this fine Friday evening? It is. It is. We are one week out from Justice League, which I'm super stoked for. I went out to some breweries today, drank at Woodland Empire, drank at Barbarian Brewing. I got some good brews. Oh, uh, here are a few beers in. I'm zero beers yeah, in. I, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Um, if you found us, by the way, then congrats. But if you happen to stumble upon us, make sure you search Hops News on all your podcasting platforms. Check us out on YouTube. Check us out on Instagram, Hops Geek News. Check us out on Twitter. We are there as well. And without further ado, what are you drinking tonight? So I actually, I haven't even opened it yet, but I already know it's amazing because I've had it. Oh, Cracking pop it that open in the now. microphone. It is a beer from Southern Swells Brewing in Jacksonville called Karate in the Garage. It is an IPA. What? Yes, and I got it because, um, you know, not to spoil this amazing movie or anything, but as soon as Superman said, you have to save Martha, they become best friends. And then they most likely probably did Karate in the Garage before they went and tried to save the day. <laughs> All right, there's going to be no slander on this podcast of Batman v Superman. I will not tolerate it. But I, oh, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of it. I'm sorry. I'll just apologize in advance. But uh, <clears throat> I got to stop at this brewery on the way home from Asheville on Wednesday. And I've had their beer before, so I knew it was going to be amazing. So when my husband's like, oh, are there any breweries in Jacksonville you want to stop by on the way home? I knew this was the one and we got, oh, oh my gosh, I tried a stout that was absolutely amazing. I know. I don't think you, well, it had peppers in it, but I feel like uh, you would still like it because it was Oh, it's that spicy, place that though. you sent. Oh yeah. 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 Gross peppers. Ew. Peppers I don't mean, belong in beer. It was so amazing. It was like Hunapu quality. And unfortunately you couldn't get it in a crowler or anything. Cause it's, you know, one of those kind of beers. Oh, it's you, just, it's just too much. Couldn't get it. But like it was phenomenal. All? Like you couldn't bring. Well, I got to drink can... it there. Oh, got you. Got but yeah, you. they weren't doing crowlers on that one. That but sucks. I did get this one and another hazy double IPA because those are mine and my husband's favorites. It just smells so good. Yeah, this beer's phenomenal. So what are you drinking? You make me want to sniff my beer now. But I am drinking Full Sail Brewing Company Haze of the Gods because oh. Batman is on god tier more often than not um the dc heroes are tailored after the old greek gods and so i figured this one it's from hood river oregon which if you know the hood river bend oregon area it's kind of the mecca for craft beer and so i get some of yes. that action out here and it's an 8.5 percent double ipa and uh yeah it doesn't tell you what all is in it really to be honest with you it's just a limited edition and strong current series Ooh, that's exciting so it's actually pretty good. Doesn't taste like a hazy, you know, double IPA. It's pretty light too, actually looking. So yeah, actually ours look kind of similar. This one says IPA, but it tastes like a hazy. And I said I was gonna look beers up beforehand. And once again, I have not done that. Yeah, this this tastes but I will. this tastes like a not even like a regular IPA. It tastes really smooth and really light. Not in a bad way. I'm not I don't mean this in a bad way whatsoever, but it doesn't taste like your double IPA. I did have um today I went this to Woodland, like I said. I had the Ada County Stout, and I had a really good one that I should have bought cans of because it's called the, uh, was it the Devil's Bellows, something like that, and it was a, a cherry Saison, and that was wicked good. It tasted like, huh. kind of like a uh, like a cherry wine kind of, and that one was really good. Wood right. Empire cranking out with some good stuff. Uh, I barely missed Rob, so I'm going to see him next week, and then we were at Barbarian where I picked us up a couple beers. That purple stuff, which is gonna be wicked good. I grabbed that one because it reminds me of Thanos. And then uh, ah. I drank their bedrock beer, which is fruity pebbles, lime, cherries, and, excuse me, something else. And that was really, it tasted like, it tastes like cherry and fruity pebbles. Like the when you first drink it, it tasted like cherries. And then on the back end, it tastes, or I'm sorry, it tastes like fruity pebbles. 
And then on the back end, it's like cherries. <laughs> so very complex. That was good. And then we ate some tacos and it was a good time. Really, really good, smooth day. So what wasn't smooth is uh what did we fuck up last week? I know I had a fuck up. My first like one ever. Oh no. Your first one ever. Well, I'll say real quick so I don't have to fix it next week. This beer is in New England. I looked it on up on them tapped. It says mosaic lupulin powder and lots of it. A fresh, juicy hop bomb. Ooh. It is so awesome. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see teeny tiny little karate images. Hot bomb. Which I will get on the Instagram. That would have been good for Cobra Kai episode. Yes, it would have been. Unfortunately, we don't always get their beer in Orlando. I think I've actually only been able to buy it on draft at a la carte, which if anybody's ever in Orlando, a la carte is a great, it's like a permanent uh, food truck area, but the actual building sells oh. amazing craft beer and they do like tap takeover sometimes from like other Florida breweries that we don't normally get. So that's pretty cool. So I've had this beer there before. And then I have a friend, um, Tim, who actually runs a beer page in Orlando. Um, <clears throat> and he's actually hooked me up before. So we got him some cans to reciprocate the favor because this brewery is awesome. If you ever hear Southern Swells, definitely get whatever Southern Swells has. I, uh, well, since you only had your one mess up, do you want to go first? Yeah, real quick. I can't wait to get out to Orlando. And that sounds like a good place to go. So definitely gonna have to hit that up. Um, I did last week. I did say that uh, Black Widow was gonna be the first Marvel women woman movie by you know to come out solo woman movie. That's not accurate. Actually, a mystery host called me out on that. She was like, uh, "Hello, Captain Marvel," and I totally forgot Captain Marvel did come out because Black Widow's never coming out. Ugh, I know that kills me. Well, what's funny is that she called you out on that, and when I listened back. Yeah, that does sound wrong. But when you're, we were talking, all I thought we were talking about was that she was the first like female superhero in the Marvel MCU that we've seen. So she that was my thinking. Yeah, that makes sense. But, but yeah, so yeah, yeah. But she's not the first standalone movie. Absolutely. No, no was not. I'm what uh, what do you got going on over here? I see some. I see some things. I see lots of things. <laughs> so this has become my new favorite segment. This is my web redemption for those who watch Tosh Oh yeah. So um. We did uh, talk about the artist from that wrestling comic. If you listen to that, uh, we got the artist's name is Kendall Good. They actually responded on our YouTube video. They did. Um, and so kendallgood.com, the good has an E at the end, and we can share that at some point as well. So if you want to see any of his other work, because that artwork was gorgeous. Um, if we dropped uh, this past Thursday, our episode with Geek Peak, Geek Peak, which I showed up late on, and uh, they actually mentioned they were drinking Sierra Nevada out of um, Asheville, just outside of Asheville. So I actually got to drive by that brewery the other day. So I thought that was pretty cool. They're closed right now. They're only doing to-go orders. But if you're ever in the Asheville area, it's definitely worth driving near because it is gorgeous. They have like these mm. like metal hot looking things as you like drive through this windy, windy thing. I'm going to make an Asheville video soon and it'll be in there. But Sierra Nevada's actual location is on my brewery bucket list. Their original location is in Chico, California. And Ooh, I, I thought so. That one's awesome. Too. I thought they were out of out West. I thought they had two locations, but I couldn't. Yeah. Remember. So they opened the one and I don't know when exactly they opened it, but that's where they do all their East coast distribution now. But yeah, the brewery, I mean, we're like peeking inside of it. It's, I mean, it's massive. Of course it's massive because they sell their beer everywhere. Oh but, yeah. It's everywhere. Um, so I mentioned Angry Chair Brewery last week, and you asked why the name. It is actually a song from Alice in Chains. So the Angry Chair is symbolic of a place, time, or situation that you have experienced. It is something you've had to overcome or something that sparked a change in your lifestyle. Your Angry Chair is unique and something only you can conquer. And that is directly from their website. Mm -hmm. And they gave silly examples. Like it could be, you know, not losing your shit in traffic, or it could be like a serious thing you overcame, maybe depression. Like everybody's angry chair is something different that you have to overcome. And uh, if you've ever had any other stouts, <laughs> their stouts will help you overcome. Interesting. Interesting. All right. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay. On our favorite character, Star Wars episode, I don't know why I forgot about it. My actual favorite character in all of Star Wars is Kuil. Is that how you say it? The I have spoken? No. Kual, how do you say it? I, I don't know because he's nobody's favorite because he's my favorite right, and I'll tell well, you why. He's your favorite. Okay. He changed the way I parent. I no longer argue with my kids and say it again. I just say <laughs> I have spoken and I get a, Oh, I hate when you say that. And, and I storm off. Like, shut the fuck but up. They get mom. It. it always made Mando shut up. So yeah, it's true. It is true. 
Um, Chris from a nerd or oblivion nerd bar or oblivion bar. So he, we had, we're talking about Thanos and he said, I believe it's an internal and deviant combination of DNA that he has. And he is correct. That is absolutely correct. Mm. Um, he's a Titan, which is connected to the lineage to the Eternals, which is the secret society and species living on earth since the time the celestials came to earth and they are responsible for the Titans, which they actually just revealed in that comic book I had re read recently. So that was actually new information. Uh, but Thanos is an eternal and he's a type of superhuman, which according to the celestials was meant to be a protector of earth, but he has a funny way of protecting earth. But yes, he is a deviant and an eternal, or he has both of their blood. So he did not fuck up. Good for him. Okay. Um, the walking dead. Wow, you the have a list. Stormtroopers. I'm almost done. I'm going through this. Stormtroopers. It's from the Commonwealth. That was the word. Um, I called Spider-Man Superman, but then I said Peter Parker, so that's fine. Oh, and everything in our WandaVision episode, we were wrong. <laughs> that's about it. But we'll discuss more of that on our uh, Quips and Dips pod. Ah, so, yes. what have you read or watched this week? All right. Well, start things. I uh, I watched BVS, of course. Um, a lot of hate on Twitter. A lot of hate. For nerds, by nerds. They really just toured in this movie with our friends Geek Peak. I thought we had something special. Oh, I need but, to listen you know, to that. Whatever. It's fine. It's cool. You know, it's cool, man. It's not for everybody. That's fine. Um, I watch. I read. Two people. I should say I watched obviously WandaVision finale last week, which we're going to talk about in quips and dips when we go on there. That's going to release soon. And Harley Quinn. I started. I, I watched the first two seasons. Really, really well done. My favorite characters are Clayface and Bane. They just. It's clever writing where they tie in old school DC Batman with new school, and they just enter the way they write and interweave and. It's really well done. Uh, the artwork's really great. I like how bloody it gets when they're fighting. And I liked Kaylee Cuoco. She is the voice of Harley Quinn. And Oh, yeah, I heard that. She, uh, it was, it's, it's great. We finished the first two seasons. And then uh, we started Swamp Thing, which was on the DC streaming service. And then it moved to CW. They only did one season. They filmed it in North Carolina. And I guess the way, like, the taxes and all, like, it turned out to be too expensive to film. So DC only did one season which is kind of mm -hmm. disappointing because the costume looks fantastic. Like this is killer costume work. So I've I'm heard good things so far. We're three episodes in really good show. I really think it's good. Hopefully it gains some traction and they come back to it. I'd like to see a justice league dark that they've been talking about forever. So yeah, that, that show was really good. I've been reading all the future States. So I've read the suicide squad, future States, the first issue of post future state that's come out. I've read Shazam issue one of Future State. I've got the last, f the trades two through five. I just picked those up for Ice Cream Man. And mm. yeah, I've been just, I read a, just a bunch of that kind of stuff. Like all the Future States for the most part, those have been really good. What yeah, I think I got the second Aquaman. So we did a, our first giveaway. I got uh, the Future State Aquaman. So when I went to pick up comics last week, a lot of times I don't even look at what they hand me. They just hand me my comics and I'm like, thanks. And then, so they had given me the second one of the Aquaman Future State. So now I wish I had read that before I sent it to our winner, but maybe I'll read that read one. Yet. So. Um, but the no, Future State was actually good. I like the Batman ones I read were good. Suicide Squad, it's got Peacemaker at the helm. It's probably setting up for, you know, the, the TV show and things of that nature. They're kind of writing him so people kind of know. And then, uh, I will say like Shazam was good. There's kind of like Billy Batson is taken hostage. There's some things going on with Shazam. I won't go into any more detail than that. And uh, I, I actually started also reading Swamp Thing, the comic book, because I don't know a whole lot about them. And the TV show has me kind of intrigued. Yeah. So I, I picked up the Future State Swamp Things and uh, kind of diving into his character a bit. So it'd be, it'd be fun if you watch it and we can kind of talk about it at some point. Yeah. No, I've heard good things about it. Wasn't there a Swamp Thing or something back in like the late 80s or 90? I'm going to have to look into that because I know my brother had a Swamp Thing toy because he used to sing Swamp Thing. Do yeah, do I'm do pretty do. sure. Um, I'm pretty sure there was. Well, I'll look that up while you're going into what you've read or watched. All right. So uh, one of the things I actually watched, so we actually just went on a little trip with our oldest, our 17 year old. So it was one of those, you know, every hotel now you can access all your streaming networks, which is genius of them. They're going to be able to completely cut their cord. But so we we're looking for, I like to introduce her to all the classics. So we watched What's Eating Gilbert Grape. So I don't know if you remember that movie, but it's got Leonardo do, DiCaprio. Yeah. It's got Johnny Depp. It's got Mary Steenburgen. I mean, it's got John C. Riley's in it. Um, I mean, it's one of Leonardo DiCaprio's like first 
movies. I feel like yeah, you're he was really growing young, pains. and he was he played you know mentally challenged. Obviously, yeah. Johnny Depp was the older brother, kind of struggling with that, and he was his caretaker. And the very yeah. overweight mother, yeah. Oh my God! And they so, had to get a crane to lift her out of the house. You know, okay, so that's what I thought. I thought I remembered them taking the wall of the house off, and that's not what happened. They burned the house down. So now I'm thinking, what Wait, the hell movie what? was that? I swear to God, they've lifted her out with a crane. I thought, didn't that's they? What I thought. I thought they took the wall of the house down and lifted her out with a crane. Did we We're just must get... be thinking? Yeah, what's that? What? The Mandela effect or whatever? Mandela effect? Oh, Mandela did we just get effect. Berenstein Bears right, right now? Like. Um, that's gotta be another movie because when they were burning the house down, I'm like, what in the hell? I don't remember this. No. All right. First of all, there was a 1991 TV series on the Swamp Thing. And okay, uh, so that's probably why Wes Craven happened. also directed a movie on the Swamp Thing in the seventies, which was, oh, I'm sorry. 1982 Wes Craven directed a feature and 72 episodes and three seasons of his own TV series in 1990 to 93. So yes, there you it go. was now. I'm looking this Gilbert Grape ship shit up. So <laughs> okay, you looked that up. Uh, we also ended up caving to the Wandavision recommendation, and I rewatched Ultron, which honestly I hadn't watched that movie in a while. It is a good movie, and now knowing Wandavision and everything, it's actually a little more enjoyable. Oh, I'm knocking down things. Um, so that's what I watched other than Wandavision, which again we'll talk about. So I read, I picked up, I wanted something for our trip, so I picked up um, Sam Wilson, Captain America. And it's called Not My Captain America. It's the trade back. So it's the first six issues. I think it's fairly new, but it was really good. So he's basically taken over the shield from Cap. And yeah. um, Misty Knight's in this. You got mm -hmm. um, the night nurses in this too. Uh, Rosie Dawson's character, but she's a doctor. She's not a nurse. And uh, it's, it's actually pretty cool. And it deals with kind of like current events. Like there's somebody even calls him Captain Socialism because oh. he's trying to like help these people crossing the border. Oh, so, how dare yeah. he? <laughs> it's got some political stuff in it, but it was really good. And it was really cool to kind of see Sam Wilson um, in the comics because I hadn't read anything with him in it before. So this is the first six issues and it looks like it could keep going or it could stop. I'm hoping it keeps going. If anybody has read it, let me know. But yeah, I got to look that up. I definitely want to keep reading that. And I ordered, I have not started reading this yet, but I did finally get Invincible. If anybody's watching on, I mean, this looks like a phone book. Are you Holy still crap, that thing is here? huge. It's a compendium one thing. It was only like, I think 40 bucks for all this rather than buying like wow. 75. Oh, so it has everything $30. in there. No, this is one of, I think three, oh. but I started the comic book a few years back and never finished it. And now they're about to make a show. So I want to finish it. All right. So what's up with yeah. Gilbert Grape? Okay. First of all, John C. Riley's in this. Okay. Um, yeah. Second I said of all, that. Yeah, Bonnie climbs the stairs to her bedroom for the first time since her husband's suicide. Arnie right. later tries to wake her, but discovers that she has died. Prote to protect Bonnie's dignity, the family emptied the home of possessions and set fire to it. Right, that's Burning what they said. That everybody would come out watching her what? get pulled out of there. What movie did we watch? I don't know, but apparently we both watched it. What? We watched the same uh. movie. What? I, wow, okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> Here, I'm going to Google what movie did. did yeah. yeah, you can move right. on to so, uh, breaking news. We have some news. breaking news, all right, which breaking news, apparently, we watched the same movie, thought the same thing, but it's not the same movie. I don't know. That's crazy. Um, so as we all know, Zack Snyder's Justice League is coming out. I'm excited. I took the day off. I'm going to four-hour binge the fuck out <laughs> this movie. Um, Kevin Smith is hosting the Zack Snyder Justice League red carpet event the night before at eight Pacific. I think you had to be invited to it, obviously, for like a live streaming event kind of deal. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, I ordered Dunkin Donuts sweatpants. I am very much every day trying to get Dunkin Donuts to sponsor us on our podcast, and they haven't noticed me once yet. So I'm looking kind of stupid. So if Dunkin Donuts would like to just go ahead and say hello, acknowledge our existence. Hello. That, that'd be cool. I'm getting a tattoo of Sasquatch holding a Dunkin' Donuts cup, actually. So that's going to be kind of fun. Oh, my goodness. It's gonna Maybe they know that your co-host is Starbucks only. Well, Not Starbucks just... only. I just don't like Dunkin' Donuts, unless it's a pumpkin donut. Oh, I my gosh. Those. I can't. I have the, the the news that you and I both know about. I can't wait to get my Dunkin' Donuts all the effing time while I'm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um. So uh... the Powerpuff Girls, they have cast their, their Powerpuff Girls. So Dove Cameron. Chloe Bennett and Yana Peralta. Which is Daisy. Chloe so, yeah, Bennett is from, from uh, Agents of Shield. Yes, I and, love uh, Agents. 
I don't know what the other two are from. I'm going to be honest. I didn't look it up. I don't either. Crazy, so that's just on me. But I am not excited for this TV show. Because oh, I don't care at all. Place. The cartoon was obnoxious. It's a CW show. The cartoon was decent. Okay. Cartoon was cool. I, I didn't like that. I had to stop letting my daughter watch the cartoon because they were being obnoxious. And she, I can't wait to see live action Mojo Jojo. It. And then I hope we see the devil character, the crab mm. devil thing in drag. That'll be interesting. But <laughs> I I don't know. Like they're doing it as they're older and they regret their crime fighting days. That's kind of stupid. We don't we don't need this. We don't need this show. So I think it's dumb. And obviously what I okay. said. That's kind of all. You I never had. know though because they. More. They do a lot of twists and turns with shows nowadays, and it's not anything. It's the CW is going to suck. Not everything on the CW. Sucks. That's fair. I will say also, Joe Mang. I can't pronounce his last name. Deathstroke. He played. We all know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, he's. He was he in How I Met Your Mother. Was supposed to be. There was like six different versions of his Deathstroke, and him and Ben Affleck were supposed to have like an Arkham Origins fight. I would have just straight up just came in my pants if that had happened on the big screen. But we're not getting that, so that's cool. That's stroke. Uh, he, had, he had come out and said that he thinks that people are going to be clamoring for a lot more Zack Snyder, DC characters, things like that after the Justice League. So he, I, I like him as an actor. I hope he gets to play Deathstroke. His costume and everything looked fucking sweet. And uh, yeah. so I guess we'll see. That's all I have for realsies now. Yeah, he's a cool dude. Um, October 1st, 2021, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is opening at Epcot in the France Pavilion, and that will actually be Walt Disney World's 50th birthday. Oh. Um, I do want to specify, a lot of people say this, the rat's name is not Ratatouille. Ratatouille is the dish he makes. The rat's name is Remy. Ah, oh, yeah, that um, is right. I know a lot of people get uh, mixed up with that, so that's that's very true. Yeah. Uh, just a reminder, March 19th is Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, and another thing I did watch was the making of WandaVision on that assembly show. That was pretty cool. It's like an hour long and they show you a lot of behind the scenes stuff and the actors talk and whatnot. Pretty cool. And then they have the legends, those like five minute videos. They have one for Falcon, Bucky, um, Zemo and Sharon Carter. So if you want to get Ooh. caught up on their little appearances in the movies, it's a nice, good thing to get you caught up. Um, Obi-Wan will have a recurring role in the Disney Plus Andor show. Andor show. You're smiling. <laughs> Cassie and Andor. Obi-Wan Kenobi. That should have been your news. Why did I take that? I don't know. I'm just uh, giving you all those things you messed up. I'm just giving you the You can the always bone. take all the Star Wars news. Uh, Space Jam 2 new images have come out. That movie will be coming out July 16th. Lola Bunny is no longer looking HBO like a snack. Max and they, theaters. Yeah, I heard ooh. that. They messed with her. They messed with Lola Bunny for all you disgusting furries out there. Are you disgusting? <laughs> this is where everybody's furry obsession started. Lola Bunny and Space Jam 1. They couldn't repeat this for another generation. Damn shame. So Michelle Gomez, uh, any Doctor Who fans know her as Missy. She's awesome as Missy. Or the, She's uh, also in Sabrina. The master. And she's been cast for Doom Patrol season three as the villain, Madam Rogue. So that should be good because she's awesome. Mm. So, and of course, I'm sure you heard there's another Spider, or not Spider-Man, Jeez and Rice, I use them back and forth. Another Superman reboot in the works. What do you think of that? <laughs> I feel like that's how everybody feels. I like Henry Cavill. Henry but Cavill I don't know why DC is just a keeps good Superman. Doing DC this. can't get their shit yeah, together. Yeah, he's awesome. DC cannot get their shit together. It is insane. The four, okay, yeah. so I do have a piece of that going back to the Deathstroke. They were going to make a $40 million Deathstroke film. And uh, Gareth Evans was going to be the director. This would have been, this movie itself would have made its money back and then some. It would have made $200 million easily. You, you spend $40 million on it. Instead, DC said no. And then. We'll just make just, another Superman. They, 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 why are we, what are we doing? What are we doing, Warner Brothers? What are you doing? I don't know. Why? You don't need you to think reboot the character. Bring Henry like, Cavill know, back. Yeah, he's my favorite Superman. I love him. But why? I don't get why they don't take a page from Marvel's book and like pull into your vault. Like nobody really knew Iron Man before he started this empire. Like they find somebody else. They can't get out of their own way. I don't get it. I, I do not understand what they're doing. They don't seem to have a plan. They they are just a mess and it's frustrating as a DC. They need fan, a Kevin Feige. I'm more, I'm a DC fan and it's very frustrating. 
Oh my goodness. I'm looking at your notes right. for this. Okay. So why don't you take let's get it into this to our main topic. It's Batman v Superman time folks. Um, Batman versus <laughs> Superman. <laughs> I saw this movie <laughs> midnight at in theaters. I came out and I liked it. My friends I was with, they obviously didn't like it very much. A lot of people didn't like it. It started out really great. The reviews, everybody was excited about it. Come out the next day. And uh, it was at like 27% Rotten Tomatoes, which fuck Rotten Tomatoes, who gives a shit. But a couple of things that it was inspired by, though, was obviously Dark Knight Returns, my favorite Batman storyline comic book, and also The Death of Superman, which showcases Batman or uh, Superman fighting Doomsday, and they ultimately kill each other. And so that's what this kind of took from. It is, I liked the movie. I know most people didn't. I thought it was good. This I, I was very sour towards Ben Affleck being Batman when the news initially broke. However, I thought he played like the uh, pompous billionaire a little bit. He, he played that really well. I thought Henry Cavill, his Superman, obviously it took the extended edition of Henry Cavill kind of doing his detective kind of things as a reporter. I liked him. I thought Jeremy Irons was a fantastic Alfred. I really liked him as that. Mm-hmm. You know, that. And even Lex Luthor, like shout out to Scotch and Sports, I put out there, they agree. Lex Luthor wasn't a, wasn't a bad character. Like he wasn't he he wasn't the best. Okay, like I, he was more of a Riddler type character, which I was talking with another podcast, uh, Caller ID with Andy Rex. We got more like Riddler vibes, but I actually would have liked to have seen more from Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor because I didn't hate it. It was kind of weird and whatnot, but I didn't hate his his Lex Luthor. So there's there's things I like, especially with the uh, the warehouse scene where they go and they fight, and that's straight out of a comic book. So this movie very divisive. And then of course Justice League happened after, and we all know what happened there. So we'll uh, go ahead and let you give your little behind the scenes, and then we'll we'll kind of dive into the movie. All right. So yes, I got the fun facts. Um, I, I did like Jeremy Irons, uh, but he, I mean, every time I hear him, I just hear Scar. I mean, oh, there was yeah, even one line course. he even said, and I'm just waiting for him to, <laughs> to say, he said, so you, and I'm like, or so your father showed you the whole kingdom, did he? Like, I was waiting for him to say that. So Zack Snyder actually came out recently after being asked his opinion on Batman v Superman being a joke because of the Martha line. And he said he's happy people are still talking about it. It's true. Um, so, this version of Batman is like, oh, you just said this based on the Frank Miller version of the character. And that's actually part of why Ben Affleck accepted the role. He also um, did it for his kids too. No, oh, okay. That's good. I had read something else that his kids just want to watch Frozen and they don't care no, as much. But his, the, as they get older, they probably will. He did. He played it for his kids and all that stuff. He was really excited. This is, and then obviously um, after that, it kind of became you know, is what it is. And we got the sad Affleck and all that kind of stuff. So hello, darkness, my old friend. Uh, so Ben Affleck asked Christian Bale for any Batman tips and his uh, tip was a zipper so he can pee without a team of people. And he got <laughs> his zipper. Um, when casting Batman, they wanted somebody taller than Henry Cavill. Did I say it right this time? Cavill? Yeah. Okay. Either or. Affleck is 6'3", so he won. Um, yeah. Affleck wanted to keep the bat suit, but he was told he'd have to pay a hundred grand to do that. So he did not. Are you kidding me? If you got Ben Affleck money, that's that's kind of what I thought. That's a hundred dollars. I'd pay that. Like, oh, I got to pay a hundred grand. Okay, let me pull out my Goodwill Hunting or whatever the fuck money, and like, great, a hundred grand. That's nothing. Okay, sure. That's kind of what I thought as well. Come on, Ben. Be better, dude. Not worth it for him. I think he was probably maybe thinking they were just going to give it to him. They should have Um, the way they did him dirty. All right, continue. So his suit actually has a voice modifier in it, which is actually pretty funny because Kevin Smith told him that his voice was too high to be Batman. And that's why they did that. I love you, Kevin Smith. I Uh, I love Kevin Smith. Oh my God. Hardest working man in in the industry. In Mallrats, there's actually parody covers of comic books with the stars and Ben Affleck is actually Batman on that. So did he foresee this? He must have. And Superman only has 42 lines of dialogue, and half of them are saying Martha. Hmm. That right. second part's a lie. The first part's true. You shut okay. your mouth. I I'm say. ready. 
All right. All right. <laughs> Shut my mouth so when I talk to you. The movie starts and kicks off. We're, we're going to talk a little the unedited version, like the three hour long version, because that really is the only one that matters. It starts off, you know, Lois Lane is going to talk to some warlord. They bring Jimmy Olsen and they fucking kill Jimmy Olsen in five minutes. I'm like, Right. Yeah, it's kind of shitty, you know. He My daughter's like, "Did they really just kill Jimmy Olsen already?" I'm like, yeah, that like that it. was kind of shitty. They brought him in to kill him, and then uh, you know, Superman saves her, of course, and so everybody's got beef. Like, I I can understand the the aspect you have all the or I'm sorry, the movie doesn't start there. The movie starts with Bruce Wayne in Metropolis while Zod and Superman are fighting, and. Um, he's driving his Jeep. I, I vividly remember the Jeep commercials when they're really showcasing this movie. It's the Jeep driving through Metropolis, getting destroyed and stuff. That was like their commercial for a Jeep slash Batman v Superman. So that was always a funny one. But you know, he sees it get destroyed. He sees a little girl who lost her parents. And uh, was his name? Frank or whatever the fuck in the tower gets just killed. The guy and, that worked. Yeah. And so that's kind of where his legs. hatred, his hatred for... Uh, Superman starts there, which to be honest, this is a Batman aliens in general, right? I mean, this Batman has been fighting street level crime for like 20 years up to this point, and then he goes to Metropolis and he sees a lot of innocent people die. You don't really understand what's going on. I can understand where he'd be coming from. Like, this is a threat. The guy he's playing nice now, but I just saw what he can do. Who's to say he isn't going to just fucking come around and kill us? So, I don't hate that. I I don't hate it at all. Right. But at the same time, Superman's the only one who can stop these other bad aliens. I mean, like, who else is going to be able to stop the next sod? Right. And, and Batman so, even says there's more of them out there. For sure. And Batman, again, he he doesn't understand. He's older at this point. He doesn't quite grasp what the situation is. And so he's not used to seeing this kind of stuff. And I'm I'm he comes around, obviously. It takes him a little while, but... Batman has never really had friends. He's been a long while. He struggles with this kind of stuff in some of the comic and books and things like that. Right. Well, and Alfred tries to talk some sense into him. And even at the end when he like, you know, is fighting Doomsday, he's like, well, if you hadn't used all the kryptonite, is basically what he says. He's like, well, I have one left. But okay, Alfred's trying to talk sense into him, but he's been his caretaker since his parents died. Like maybe a little child therapy would have gone a long way because he has some serious freaking issues. He's like, oh, your oh, parents might have told you that yeah. you would be somebody one day. And he's like, but my parents told me you have to force things or whatever he said. But yeah, he's seriously needed a child therapist. I do feel like that he is a little extreme. Batman in general as a character, if that's the only reason why you're at the, it, it is, that has been my one and only problem kind of like, I'm not saying get over your parents dying, but... At what point does it not plague you as much as it kind of does throughout all these right. iterations, right? Like Val Kilmer, well, it was in the Val Kilmer Batman, uh, Chase Meridian, or was it in that one where she drops a rose or something like that? And he just starts like these insane flashbacks, PTSD to the night his parents died or whatever. I'm like, all right, come on. I don't guy. Even remember. Like, I haven't seen any of those since like the 90s. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it's just things like that nature. So. Then yeah. after after that, we roll into obviously when Jimmy Olsen gets capped, Lois Lane, Superman shows up. It's Lex Luthor's people there. They're using special bullets. They make it kind of, they come there and they, in the extended edition, they burn the whole place down and kind of make it look like he uses heat vision. So that's why we have oh. this here. Yeah. The, the Lex Luthor basically sets it up to make it look like Superman did it. So that's why everyone's having these hearings and things of that nature. Like, why does he get to side? And I'm fine with the whole God man kind of thing because you have a lot of the ordinary people who are like, well, he's basically a God who's to say who he gets to decide and all this kind of stuff. So you right, think it's about the Sokovia it today, Accords. Right. And look at it today is people absolutely would be like, he's God and all that kind of stuff that you, you would see those similarities without a doubt. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think like even Lex Luthor in this is almost Zemo, like he pins them against each other. But I just yeah. feel like just, you know, Batman was just so just not there. He was like a, an adolescent who was just still so angry. And I feel like they even show how lonely he is. It's like you have the scene with like Superman and Lois in the bathtub and then it, 
you know, they're about to get it on and then it cuts to Batman alone I on an elevator. It on it's Henry like, Cavill this guy just needs too. to get laid already. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> well, Jeremy Irons wouldn't. is like, basically, why don't you go out and make me, he's that grandpa or the grandma, or the mom, basically, who's like, when are you going to give me grandkids? The whole movie, he's like, right? Bruce, you're going to go and smash or what? But because he knows he may you know i didn't get him child therapy now he just needs to get laid well no it's true even even he's just tired at that point alfred's like dude just come on oh you're drinking you're gonna leave the next generation of wayne's dry of their wine cellar and he's like Psh, keep dreaming alfred and it's like alfred's tired too he just wants he just wants some grandkids to play with the poor guy yep he's like i gave up you know finding my own family to raise your selfish little ass yeah for sure and you're spoiled and tired um, wayne ass. manor is kind of destroyed here which i think is cool because again you're seeing just a batman and alfred who are just worn out they're living down by the lake and he gets in, by the i like that um i don't like i will say i do not like how close gotham is to metropolis it's you're just yeah gonna, they have them like across the, the these two river. major cities you're just gonna drive across the street and you're in another city it's that that wouldn't make any sense i don't like that at all um, nice. they wanted them to just be able to go back and forth super quick right, i mean they do that stupid. a little bit in like the flash universe with like central city and um star city or whatever it's yeah, like they're they there do. like immediately <laughs> But that that's fine. I'm okay with that. But because they don't talk about them being next to each other in that manner. Whereas this one, it's you can see the bat signal from Metropolis, and I think that's dumb. In no universe do you have two major cities like that close. So I don't like that. I will say I like that Superman was doing a little bit of reporter work against Batman. I liked you got to kind of see Clark Kent being Clark Kent as a reporter, and I like Lawrence Fishburne. He's kind of that asshole, you know. Just, yeah but my my wife she kind of pointed out something it was funny and she's like when um he was basically like don't let anybody take your lunch money kent in gotham my wife is like who the fuck is gonna go and try to beat up henry cavill you see how big that i know it's like those on. The glasses dude is massive. don't hide his muscles right <laughs> no the dude is massive he has to wear like two shirts sewn together because he's so freaking stacked <laughs> I know, and he just kind of looks at him, and like you know, he's looking at him because you know, oh, I have superpowers, but, but yeah, he's still like huge. Yeah, nobody's picking on Henry Cavill in the streets. Let me tell you that much. So, no. uh, and I really liked. So we go to the uh, the gallery night where Lex Luthor. Yeah, he's kind of acting all strange on stage and whatnot, but he kind of it comes out. He brings everybody together, and I liked the scene because you get to see Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. He kind of has to act like he had too many cocktails he's planning the device at lex trying to figure out whatever's going on and uh so i really like that he was playing into the the playboy aspect and then he kind of talks shit to uh clark there like oh do i own the daily planet i thought that was cool too i like that interaction and yeah you know, did you, you ever see, see the jimmy kimmel skit with that i might have i i probably have i just don't remember it right now where he goes up to them and he's like at the, the gallery party and he's talking to both of them. And then he starts like covering Batman's face and like taking Clark's glasses off. He's like, hold on a minute. <laughs> Pretty funny. It is. It is always kind of funny that nobody recognizes, but then again, like put a mask on, right. It's the COVID times. We put a mask on. How many times are you recognizing somebody? You can't sometimes. And so I can kind of see I it or, know. I, I take my glasses off and some people don't recognize me at first. So I can kind of see it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> it is. It is true. Well, there you go. Maybe you're Superman. I don't know. I, but no, it, I was at Tactical Brewing last week, though. I had sunglasses and a mask on and I'm like 10 feet away from some, from somebody and they're like, hey, how are you? I was like, how the hell did she know it was me? It's it's the Marvel. You, you're practicing the Marvel method and it doesn't work. <laughs> nope. Apparently. So. Yeah, we kind of see then Batman is going after that ship and uh, Superman shows up and basically tells him, quit it, stop, you stop, just stop it. And so he rips the doors off. <laughs> Batman's kind of like, it. oh, shit, dude, crazy. And so that's their first interaction. Yeah, he and does look a little scared. Batman was like, oh, God, I think I peed a little Alfred. And that was cool, which reminds me of when... <laughs> They're at the, the gallery night. I hope he has a filtration system yeah. like Iron Man. <laughs> Clark can kind of hear the talking, the squawking on the thing. So that's kind of how he figures out who he is, which I thought that was cool. And uh, so I, I like, ultimately, we'll just kind of get to the battle there. Batman v Superman. I thought it was a good fight. 
I, I know everybody was like, all right, it's going to be five minutes and over, but yeah, I mean, they kind of hash that's, this is what dudes do. Guys will fight fists. Like we will beat each other up and then we're shaking hands and getting a beer afterwards. That's what dudes do. And so I'm okay with them beating each other up and then being friends after that's what guys do. My thing with just the beating up was just that I felt like Batman was never truly justified in his, his thing. It was more like this could be a potential threat and he needs to be put down now, but also, Uh, uh, but doesn't the American government and everybody else kind of do that as well? Okay. But why, but Batman's acting like Superman needs to be controlled, but Batman has no rules. So yeah, why is Batman allowed to take this We're showing upon? He's not. It's hypocritical. Right. Batman's in the wrong here, as we all know. Right. That's, but that's giving character I guess I development just to Batman, though. Felt like it wasn't enough. And I have a big issue with that in multiple movies where, and even in Lois and Clark, the TV show, where the kids just, they switch too quick. Like, nobody's opinions can go so strong from one stance to another like that without something hugely monumental happening and knowing that his Have you seen the political environment these days? I'm talking kidding? about good movies. I'm not talking kidding? about our political no, this environment. This is on par with all these crazies out there. So, but I guess I just feel like you know everybody calls Batman an anti-hero, and in some instances he is. But I feel like anti-heroes don't want to be heroes. They're like Deadpool, but he really d- does want to be a hero. He doesn't want to be a hero. He just wants to make it so other like he just wants to make crime go away. He's only in it for himself. Like his parents got shot, so he wants to make it so other parents don't get shot. Essentially but he's lost his way at this point. He's been so jaded by doing it and nothing has changed in the 20 years. So at this point, Batman's just kind of as he's branding people, all that stuff to where like he brands yeah, that was people pretty messed up. He brands Brand them. So that way he doesn't and then kill they're them. screwed. Yeah. They go to jail and then they get killed. And that's one less person on the street. Like he's not, phys- he's not killing them personally. He's letting the other people kill them. So it's some character development. Batman's kind of this wishy washy, like, gray area character and i'm I'm cool i think that's great because it's an interesting take on batman he's just jaded at that point i liked that they each got their hits in so batman at first was like oh shit he shit his pants because superman's what did i get myself into was eating punches and beat him up a little bit in his his suit i thought his suit was great it was ripped straight from the comic books and um then you know the kryptonite as he figures out that works and so he gets his in and I, I really enjoyed that he gets his hits in. They go back and forth. I thought the fight was pretty good overall for what it was. They they fought it out. Batman well, saw his tricks. Good. Yeah, that wasn't the issue. Yeah. No, I, I understand. But the, you know, the fight was good. And then of course, Superman's got the, the kryptonite going through him. Batman beats him down. As he's about to stab his ass, obviously he's like, save Martha. And that's his mom because his mom was kidnapped by Lex Luthor because Lex Luthor set up Superman to be like, Either I'm going to kill your mom or you're going to kill Zemo. Batman because he is like Zemo. Yes. And so Superman kind of got forced into it. He tells Lois, nobody stays good in this world, which my big problem here is Lois Lane. I don't like her because in this movie, she's just there to be there. They don't give her anything to do. Oh, see, I really like her as Lois Lane. Her and, and him are my favorite uh, Lois she's and Clark. She's great as Lois Lane, but the character itself in this movie has nothing to do. So she's you think she there. was like Pepper Potts and like, yes. what is it, Iron Man 2? Like she's just there to be, or she's more there. than Iron Man 2. And as you see, she shows up and he's like, that's his mom. And because Batman obviously is like, why Martha? And he starts to have his PTSD, whatever's going on. And you're, of course, everybody memes the fuck out of this. I get it. It was kind of silly. I don't like that moment either. I, I think they could have handled it differently. But it was but a pivotal moment. It was. And then I, I think what they're going for is like, he's seeing Superman as human. He's like, what do, what do you mean, Martha? Why are you saying Martha? That's my mom. All he's thinking about is his own personal mom. Then right. That's when no, I, yeah. Lois shows so up out of nowhere and Lois is like, that's his mom. And I, again, I don't like Lois Lane in this movie because she just appears for no she reason. She does push the story though, along with her actual reporting. Like, I feel like she's a better character yeah. in this than Pepper is in, in uh, Iron Man 2. She's just Pepper in Iron she Man did. 2 just starts to irritate me. Like, why, why the hell are you going with Happy? You're fine. Just stay where you are. <laughs> she does show up. She goes to DC to investigate the bullet and finds out that it's a Lex Luthor one, which by the way, that guy she talks about, talks to, that's Martian Manhunter. That's pretty sick. So, as we now learn, but yeah, I, I just don't like that. She's this. Okay. So up to that point, she was fine in the movie, but her showing up 
That's his mom. He tosses the uh, the spear away. And then he's like, nobody's dying tonight. Which leads me to like my favorite comic book moments of all time. Batman. Okay, yeah, he's flying in. He's shooting people. That's not it. He When he goes into the <laughs> warehouse and he pretty much like drops the floor. He's sitting up there. He disables everybody's guns and he drops down. And he just, this is straight from fucking video games. He is so brutal in the way that he beats everybody's ass. It is amazing. He's just, you hear, you're like, they're breaking legs. He he throws somebody against the wall. He whips the crate at somebody. Just the way he moves is so brutal. It is amazing. He gets shot and it makes sense that his helmet or, you know, his cowl is bulletproof. His, his cuffs, gauntlets. Their knife bulletproof. You kind of see that a little bit, and then he just beats the fuck out of everybody, and it is so good. I think the best part though is when Wonder Woman shows up. Okay, yeah, we're about to get. And there. he's like, "She's with you." I thought she was with you. I so the part where he goes up to KG Beast, he's saving Superman's mom Martha, and she's he's like, "I'm I'll kill her," and he's like, "I know." Like he busts through pretty much. That was kind of from the Dark Knight Returns, where he busts through the wall, and you know grabs the gun and like shoots that kind of thing that was ripped from the comic books which was great he kind of kills him kg beast gets roasted that was kind of you know not very batman like but saves martha and then doomsday gets out and uh lex is like haha this is my god god meet soup you know whatever he stupid lex luther says and uh, they go <laughs> at it like and i i thought that DC shot themselves in the foot when they released this part because they, they released Doomsday in the trailers. And then I like that he was evolving as it goes on, but I wish they kind of gave him more of that Doomsday look from the comic books, of course, because he kind of looked like an orc from like Lord of the Rings. So, but obviously Wonder Woman shows up. The Trinity is there. I, that's a badass shot. And he's like, I thought he was, mm -hmm. she was with you. And then Wonder Woman's theme hits. That was dope. And Hunter Bishop on Twitter was pretty much like if it Wonder Woman could have beaten Doomsday herself, Superman was just being dumb because he takes the kryptonite spear and Wonder Woman could have done that because she's in basically invincible. She could have killed Doomsday and it with the spear. Have killed him exactly. Because it's crit right. But I thought that was a fine scene because it shows that he's willing to sacrifice himself for this world that he owes nothing to. Which like we he, knew, but Batsy didn't. Right. Obviously, you know, Batman's basically like, oh shit. And he oh, he doesn't know what he doesn't do anything in this fight. Batman's just jumping around trying not to get killed. He's just human, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And but Wonder Woman comes in, she's a badass. She's smiling. Gal Gadot, this is your first time seeing her in the action. I thought it was really good. That was a good it was a good like fight scene between I no, I did like seeing that and seeing them even team up and she's got the lasso on him. What I thought was funny though is after Superman dies and I feel like Lois was in that scene too to add some emotional element because it's like, you know, they're not emotionally involved in Superman. And so to see her be very upset and that humanized them more too to make Batman feel like But again, Lois Lane shows up for no reason again. <laughs> well, she was still she there. I don't know, whatever. Well, again, she starts to drown and Superman gets distracted, of course. And that's what leads him to getting the spear I and hate then, when they do that too, though. They used to do it with Mary Jane. Oh, like, so ugh. Zack Snyder Justice League trailer, you see when Superman's getting stabbed, uh, the shock waves go out, and that pretty much signals the mother boxes, which is how Darkseid knows there's no Kryptonian anymore because the mother boxes get awoken on Earth by the shock wave of him yelling. You actually see those shock waves in this movie. If you pay close attention when he dies or is getting stabbed, the shockwaves go out. Those weren't just added for the Justice League trailer and movie that we are getting on Friday. It was actually in BVS too, which is pretty cool. Good to know. So yeah. I wouldn't even have paid it real as overall. That. But yeah. um, yeah, my one last thing. I just thought it was funny when Superman did die. Watching Gal Gadot just so easily carry this huge man off the thing and just delicately oh, yeah. set him down. <laughs> it was a cool scene how she just basically hangs her head and Batman's just kind of standing there, kind of realizing what happened and. You know, it's like, the, well, I guess the I'll funeral pay for the funeral. Cool. What a nice guy. Yeah, old bats, old bats. You know, he pays for the funeral. They have a fake funeral for Superman. The soldiers, they have the real funeral, and then like the dirt starts to rise. So overall, I honestly was this movie great? No, it wasn't. All right. I recognize that it has its flaws. The things that were bad were bad. The things that were great were great. There's a little bit of middle ground, but I honestly 
I loved this film. I, I like it a lot. There's a lot of things that I like, and I realize that a lot of people just hate it, and that's okay. That's how I feel about The Last Jedi. A lot of people love The Last Jedi. I thought it was fucking shit. And that's what's the great thing about movies. <laughs> movies are meant to like be up to our interpretation. That's what's so beautiful about art and all the things in this world. Like We all take these things in differently, and it's a great just to just discuss about it. I don't, I'm not, I play around. Look, you can hate this movie all you want. That's fine. I'm still going to like it. So that's how I feel. I would say overall, in my opinion, there are definitely enjoyable um, moments. There are definitely neat things that they pulled straight from the comic books. I love, I've already said I love Henry Cavill, uh, but it's not a good movie and they didn't do it the justice it deserved. I did not like the casting of Ben Affleck and I was hoping I was going to be proved wrong because there's a couple Marvel people I was proved wrong on, but I, he, I guess he lived up to my expectations. I think and that it's, un it's unfortunate that Ben had alcoholism and I'm glad he's better now. I wish people wouldn't have been so inter internet-y and I, I would love to see Ben Affleck as in a solo Batman movie, just to really see what he can do. Same with Henry Shit, Cavill. Old man Batman. I would love to see Henry Cavill come back as Superman just to see what yes, he can really do written properly and all that kind of stuff. So I liked Man of Steel. I thought it was good. Man of Steel is a good movie. Much it is a good yeah. movie. I thought, man, that's what got me on the super. I didn't like Superman. I've never liked Superman. I watched Man of Steel and I was like, I actually kind of. I'm interested in learning more about Superman and diving in because I, I hadn't before. I was just kind of like, oh, he's just this big, powerful, whatever, not that great. Yeah, and I've never read a Superman comic. Henry Cavill made it, so I actually was interested in Superman a little bit. So I hope he gets to put it on one more time. And with that said. So the WB did tell Ben Affleck to watch other reviews of like other superheroes like Robert Downey Jr. and people criticizing him to make him feel better, but I guess it didn't make He was struggling better. with his own personal stuff. That's that's what that boils down to. So yeah. we'll see how the Justice League, when it comes out Friday, we'll see how that affects anything going forward. With that said, do you have anything else to add before we wrap this on up? Nope. I think huh? that's about it. We'll see y'all well, folks next week. We'll see you next week. The Justice League will have been out. We will be talking about it, and uh, the internet's probably going to explode and just burn, and the world's going to be on fire, and no one's going to be happy. So, well, and Winter Soldier and Falcon come out. And too, Falcon and Winter Soldier, all, that's going to be a exciting. stacked day. So we're going to be talking about all the things. Make sure um, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, leave a review, love us or don't, that's fine. And uh, we'll be talking to you guys soon. We got a lot of great collaborations coming up. We'll, uh, catch us on Quips and Dips. We are going to be on that. Um, catch us with watching comics, Jock Doc. Um, we just got a lot of good collaborations coming on. We're going to be hooking up with Geek Peak again, and uh, Dads on Dayquil are going to be coming on, and there might be a little supernatural trivia action one. happening. I'm going to moderate. Kick some ass. Yeah. So thank you for coming on, and cheers, everybody. Cheers. This has been a Hops News production. You can find Hops News on all your favorite podcasts and social media platforms at Hops News. Cheers.